Here at last, the world of today is easily forgotten. For this is the sunniest land in all Europe, the richest land in traditions of a glorious history, the fatherland of valiant men who braved the seas to carry civilization to the Western Hemisphere. This is Old Spain. <laughs> In few places throughout the world today can be seen this age-old method of winnowing wheat, separating the grain from the lighter chaff by tossing it into the air and letting the accommodating wind carry away the waste. The horses are driven over the wheat, dragging a crude device that breaks the dry chaff from the kernel. The ancient city of Granada stands as a reminder of Muslim rule that once created here the wealthy, the splendid citadel of the Middle Ages. 700 years ago, the Moors invaded Spain and held this city for two centuries. Their influence upon Granada has gone so deep it is still a city of Saracen architecture and atmosphere. The Alhambra broods over the valley commanding Granada, and though time and decay have taken their toll, the white walls and towers of the summer palace of the Moorish kings stand with much of their former glory intact and surrounded by the original gardens. For seven centuries, the work of an ancient king's gardener has defied improvement. Shaded patios offer rest and quiet, and fountains play amid graceful trees as they did before Columbus sailed to find the passage to India. Beyond these outside walls of great width and strength lies a fairyland of the most delicate architecture, a reminder of Saracen culture and grandeur. The Court of the Lions is the center of the Alhambra and takes its name from this work of an unknown sculptor. And here is the so-called Myrtle Court, with its inviting pool where slave girls once bathed. The most beautiful were selected for freedom. But the most Spanish city of Spain is Seville, for it is here that the scene of Bizet's opera was laid, the city of Don Jose and Carmen the Cigarette Girl. And its real history is as colorful as a silken shawl that drapes the white shoulders of a dark-eyed senorita, for it has lived through the rise, the glory, and decay of half a dozen nations. And there is little to suggest that this is today in Seville. Its peaceful byways and stairway streets are seldom crowded with people. The old institution of the midday siesta was originated here, and is one of those old Spanish customs. Here was the last Saracen court in Western Europe. Here Isabella of Castile, with the money loaned her by a banker of Seville, financed the expedition of Columbus, which wise men called insane. Here she and Ferdinand built a great cathedral in which their ashes now repose. Seville today is much as it was four centuries ago, and anyone would have it so. For although some main avenues are wide and modern, it is like entering another world to stroll through any one of the streets where the atmosphere of the past is still alive. The cathedral built by Ferdinand and Isabella is one of the finest Gothic edifices to be found anywhere and is the third largest Christian church in the world. The town hall was built in 1526 and the sleepy streets nearby might still be of that era. 
In the heat of the brilliant midday sun, only the occasional clop-clop of donkey's hooves or a horse-drawn wagon disturbs the peaceful quiet. Nowhere in Spain are such gems of architectural beauty to be seen. Truly Spanish, yet molded by the Moorish influence. In 1929, the Great Exposition opened here, symbolizing the reunion of the mother country with her former American colonies. Many of the huge buildings that were intended to be permanent structures have become the nucleus of a great Spanish-American university. The gates of Maria Luisa open upon the park surrounding the exposition grounds a park so rich in natural beauty as to be a constant challenge to all other parks of the world. Where temporary fair buildings once stood, now there are palm-lined avenues and a cool shade that is welcome on a summer's day in Seville. The vast building of Spain is still one of the show places of the old exposition. The Alcazar, favorite theme of verse and melody by unnumbered troubadours, actually is the Arabic name of any stronghold or castle. But the most famous in Spain is the Alcazar of Seville. Though built by Christian kings of Castile, its architects were Moors, and they employed all the delicate refinements of their art in lace-like stonework and graceful arches. In the court of the damosels, Charles V married Isabella of Portugal. The potted flowers marked the place where they stood. But this is more than a land of history. It is a land of romance and music. And when a troubadour strolls into a secluded patio, there are bound to be within the sound of his strings more than one senorita who will be drawn irresistibly to the music. Please, senor, play once more so that we all can dance. At least is one fair land where time moves with leaden feet and the centuries in passing seem to linger in a kindly effort to shut out the turmoil and tribulations of the day. The world can be forgotten here and therein lies the charm and romance of old Spain.